and uh, Lucas pulled that one out. So we have a uh, Missouri turf war. Both of these players from lo locally here in Missouri. So, um, and Nathan is on a deck I don't think we've seen really on camera. The aggressive Naya mid-range deck. Uh, it's not. It's not. Naya, it's not a blitz deck by any by any stretch, mm -hmm. and it's not as blisteringly fast. We saw... Right, he calls it Naya Aggro, but you're right, it's not Blitz, it's more mid range -y. Right, uh, it's popularized by uh, Willie Edel. Mm. Uh, did well with it. And it features cards like... Um, so it starts with Experiment 1, plays uh, things like um, Boris Reckoner, uh, Voice of Resurgence is big in the deck, Advent of the Room is in Nathan's deck. Uh, and everybody has their own, like, um, twists and, like, their own personal... Uh, Prism will spin on the deck. I guess he called the Conclave in deck. Uh, this deck has uh, Silverblade Paladin. Um, see it with like, Lockdown Smiter, Gorp and Rampager. There's a whole bunch of cards like that are very efficient for their cost. Uh, generally lean on the aggressive scale of things. Uh, no Thragtus, no Restoration Anos, no Hunt Masters. Uh, this deck's trying to get you dead as opposed to uh, play some sort of defensive game. But we're off. Uh, looks like Nathan uh, on the draw, but first to the board uh, with an experiment one. That's so, a fine start. Yeah. Obviously, but also has a pretty good, good start for his deck. Um, mind that he has an Azorius charm in his hand. He's already bringing that to the front. Uh, Nathan has a really good draw. Is that because it is a second copy of Experiment One yeah. and a Dryad Militant, which will evolve both Experiment Ones. Yeah, so it looks like uh, that's going to that's going to syncopate. Yeah, David going to um. That's put a really the good syncopate. Yeah, yeah, it was. It, you know, syncopate at its best early on like this, or when somebody taps out yeah. something big, but that's less likely to well, happen. Against here's the thing. Kind of it, yeah. yeah, exactly. Like you said. Syncopate is really bad. To get a good use out of that is yeah. really big for David. Right, and you saw, I mean, that was going to be awesome. He's going to have three two-power guys on the board, uh, you know, start on turn two. So David able to keep that from happening. Wow, uh, really good charm yeah, for David. on so his turn, he has Pillar of Flame. And okay. not only that, but he has an Azorius charm to set back this experiment one even more. So he is really in the driver's seat. Yeah, now... Uh, uh, Nathan's draw not bad himself. He's got a Boros Reckoner for this turn. And he's got a Boros Charm as well in his hand. Mm -hmm. And a um, Glocane Rampage. Here. Okay. So Reckoner comes down. David thinking about it. Oh, oh, does not have a David has a Dissipate. He does hand. have a Dissipate. Uh, so, so if you're wondering about his uh, Counterspell Suite, two each of Syncopate, Dissipate, and a Rewind for fun. This is tough, like, Nathan's draw is really, really, really good. Um, David is doing a great job of weathering the storm. He's got the cards right, but he's got he's, yeah. he's got a bunch of options to use, but it, he doesn't have enough for everything. So you decide what he wants to prioritize. Yeah, so it looks like he's... Yeah. I do like his Aurora Storming here because you are going to devolve, basically. Mm -hmm. But he looks like he's going to take the damage after thinking about it. Uh, don't like thinking about it so long and not using it. Yeah. So well, he certainly telegraphed it. Yeah. You're turning your face up here. He's gonna play a Hallowed Fountain. He's gonna play a Snapcaster Mage, Pillar of Flame. It makes a it makes yeah. a lot of sense. Yeah. So. To not do it, but don't think for it so long. Right. Uh, so he he had a plan in mind. It was just he had to take a minute to come to that plan. Mm -hmm. So, so far, everything David's Nathan... done has exiled Nathan's guys. <laughs> I was like, those should be in the, those should be ex oh wait, all three should be exiled. Yes. They are exiled. So the Boris Reckoner comes and uh, crosses the red zone. And yeah. Wow. Nathan with that window to, it, No, uh, is he, is, oh, he can't double strike. He doesn't have a second red source. Yeah. That, I do not, that's. That would have so been That's not a very good uh, channel there. If you could double strike it and deal, you blood know, rush. 14. Yeah. <laughs> well, that would be Yeah, you blood better, rush yeah. the Rampager, double strike double the strike, thing. Yeah. But I do not like... It has far more value as a 4-4, four -four, in my opinion. And, uh... Than 4 damage. Especially when it's not countering anything. Yeah, it is very weird. Like, we, we're calling uh, David's deck Blue-White-Red... <clears throat> excuse me, Control. But... 
it's it's kind of an amalgamation of flash and control. Like he doesn't have, uh, it doesn't seem like so much of a flash deck. I guess it seems more flash than control though. Uh, yeah. Only one supreme verdict. I guess that's the mm -hmm. thing that that jumps out at me as being less control oriented. He doesn't, ha you know, he's got some counter spells, uh, but you know that's. Wait, right. and we had him on camera, and we uh, said the most unique thing about his deck is that uh, Geist of Same Trap. Right. Yes. Yeah, so they're figuring out their uh, exile. Yeah, everything's exi exiled, but the Gore Clan Rampager, and uh, yeah, because he they're pillar figuring that out. Yeah. What is that under the Rampager? It's an experimental one that should be exiled. But... Yes, that's what I thought. Okay. Yeah, because both experiment ones were pillared. Right, and then one was, uh, and then yeah. uh, militant was syncopated. So Azorius Charm, uh, and a, okay, so really out of sequencing here. Yeah, things <laughs> <laughs> dissipate. Uh, yeah, I think. Okay, we need to get all these uh, things situated here. So dissipate. Yeah, there we go. Okay, still, so, that experiment one shouldn't be in there though, because right. it was pillared. Yeah, there yeah. we go. Okay. We've got things straight. So the the dried militant and the rampager in the graveyard for Nathan, the snapcaster dissipate and syncopate for David. And the board is once again clear and safe uh, for Boros Reckoner from Nathan Murray. Well, it was the one put oh, on no, top the, of his uh, deck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. With. Uh, Azorius charm. Right. So you knew that was coming. And then another dissipate, or is that? Uh, Snapcaster dissipate. Uh, oh, wait, no, on the it. return of Boris Reckoner. I see. Never mind. That's the graveyard, not the exile zone. I the got graveyard is. Uh, the graveyard is the farthest right. Yeah, that's. Usually, I think of the the graveyard as being next to the library. That's why it threw yes. me off there too. So and restoration see... angel from David. This could this could get a little dicey for David. That is in pretty good control. I, uh, he's only on 10 life. Uh, Nathan has a Boros Charm in hand. Oh, but he's going to get aggressive. He is. Snapcaster and Restoration Angel. He does have a... Uh, swinging. And a knock Nathan 9. Oh, wow. What a great draw. Geist of St. Traff. So, uh, I believe Nathan needs to draw something real, real immediately. Um, he's got a voice of resurgence. I think he is dead on board. Yeah. Well, dead to the Syrian Sphere in hand. Yeah, it'll be the, the Angel and the Angel Token will, yes. will do the seven. Uh, and the Syrian Sphere will, will do the last. Yeah. Off, yeah. So, wow, and a quick hitting game. David uh, uses Geisipsen Trapped on a clear board and does the work that we wanted Aetherling in his deck, but Geisipsen <laughs> Trapped. Uh, Sometimes, doing, sometimes doing good work, it's much cheaper. pretty good, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't think anybody would argue with you there. It's, yeah, it's when you card. can clear the board, Geist of Searing Chapter is one of the best cards you can possibly have. Uh, it just blanks all the removal. But. It's not very good in the creature infested world that is standard. Uh, David with quite the slow roll here. Maybe playing around a card. I'm trying to think of what kind of card uh, Nathan could have. Other than that, this is uh... And here we see the blocking where he's able to block. Everybody yeah, in Angels team up to do seven, knocking Nathan to one, and show him the shoot soon spear, and we're going to game two. Okay. Uh, quick game one in favor of David Barani. Yeah, after a little bit of confusion there, what was supposed to be exiled, what was supposed to be in the graveyard. Yeah. There was a little... A little confusing, but uh, we figured it out, and we're going to game two. All right, so, so what are we doing? Both these players, uh, once again, uh, playing. The winner of this will make top eight. Yeah. In fact, the winner of this will likely be the first seed. The yes. Top seed. Because this is the high. Yeah, this is the highest table that. Uh, that didn't draw. They did not. Was not able to draw. Um. So, in um, Nathan's deck, uh, we see. Means uh, three volcanic strength. A lot of uh, disagreement over the effectiveness of that card. Uh, it will make uh, Nathan's creatures unblockable a lot of the time, but it's very soft to something like Azorius Charm. 
Uh, cards you will see uh, probably Boros Charm. Both do counter Supreme Verdict and uh, fit, give some uh, some reach. Uh, Domi Red. Uh, even though they don't work well together, mm -hmm. uh, and that Domi Red wants almost all creatures. Uh, so if the Domi, I would imagine the Domi's come in and the Volcanic Strengths do not. Um, just to keep the creature count high and uh, in Nathan's deck. Uh, as for cuts, I like cutting Searing Spear. Not uh, not very effective against any of uh, David's creatures. Uh, on on David's side, I like he's got three Is It Staticasters, which uh, which could potentially come in and, and do a lot of work depending on the, the state of the game. A lot of the creatures he saw have one toughness at least at some point. The experiment yeah. ones, the experiment ones, will, will have uh, one and the dried militants, ones, and the dried militants. Right, he saw a lot of um, smaller guys. You also get to uh, flash block, force, to, yeah, force their stringer guys to uh, evolve, right? Or, yeah, uh, on die, exactly. Uh, Basically and evolving. Got, right. Uh, he's got an additional pillar of flame. That is, that's the fourth copy. He's got three main. who we'll probably bring that in. Yeah. He's also got two copies of Supreme Verdict. I mean, I, of course, feel like uh, it's a creature deck. You want a lot of Supreme Verdict. So, uh, yeah. but, but maybe he, he feels like that's too slow. I don't know. Uh, what, Nathan's like, deck is resilient yeah. to uh, Supreme Verdict. But it still is a mono creature deck, basically. Yeah, so it seems like Verdict would be pretty good. And then, yeah. uh, you know, he's as far as cuts... He's got uh, some counter spells that I don't think. Yeah, you know, he was he able to get the use out of his uh, counter spells that game. Yeah, for sure. But I don't think you know keep the rewind. And yeah, the, uh, I don't like the sync base, especially on the draw. Maybe you know even cutting the dissipates. He's got four counter spell, five counter spells main that he can just uh, cut out if he wants to to make room for the three static casters and the uh, pillar and one verdict. He need to make one more cut for the other. Uh, the other verdict could probably just uh, maybe even yeah I, I'm trying to think of what I would cut for that other other verdict or the the fourth pillar uh, maybe is it charm yeah uh, the other option if you want uh, if you depends on what kind of role he sees himself you mm -hmm. could see cutting dice of Saint Yeah. I mean yeah if he wants to go to basically an actual mono removal deck. Right, he would be very much more in the control role at that point. Yeah. He is going to be on the draw here. It would be like 20 plus removal spells, uh, 4 Restoration Angel, 4 Snapcaster Mage, and 3 Sphinx's Revelation. That's yeah. pretty much it. Yeah, then that's a control deck. That's, yeah, that's pretty much your definition of an old school flash deck, if you want to go to that. I mean, he's definitely got some like uh, different card choices that really changed like, the, the tone of his deck. Uh, you know, guys, the same trap being one of them. Uh, just is like counter spells uh, and no, no think twices. Only twenty four lands. Like, make a sleeker deck. Yeah. Um, but he still has a lot of like flash elements, a lot of control elements uh, in his uh, deck. He's got a Rune Chanter's Pike in the board. Just you know, a, yeah, I'm not sure. Kind of, yeah, I'm not sure what kind of matchups he wants. Right. Those. It's an interesting card. It looks like he's. He's smiling kidding. about his opener. Yeah. And leads with a steam vents after uh, Nathan's turn one root mount drag. Here in game two of the final round of Swiss at the StarCityGames.com open series here in mana? St. Louis. Uh, he is currently like he... missing white mana. Yeah, I do not board. think. Strangle Rule Geist, though, doesn't care about that. He's going to come in for two. He's got a, he's got a friend, I believe. It is not a uh, a promo version, but it is a buddy. Yeah. Uh, it still is a two-one undying haster. Yep. David with a clip top retreat, uh, pass back. Domri. And there's a Domri. Yeah. So. So he's gonna go a dried militant. Yeah. I believe rancor. It's also yep. There's a rancor. And yep, rancor on the geist here. And yeah. That's gonna. That's that's. Gonna really big play for response, uh, right, David. So, so no, no, the Rancor fizzles. Yeah, the yeah, Rancor doesn't yeah. go back to your hand. It never hits Every, Everybody but right. Nathan uh, put the Rancor in the graveyard. Yeah. <laughs> Directors are uh, yeah. <laughs> on top of it, too. Uh, David was also on top of it. Yep. Well, I mean, that was kind of the point of it. Yeah. Countered the Rancor. However, uh, David does have um, Azorius Trunk. 
Is this other removal spell? Mm -hmm. Uh, so that that is not very good against either of his creatures. The dry militant being so cheap and the right. shaker guys have it. being able to reset yeah. pretty much, yeah, and cheap and haste, yeah. So David trying to decide how he wants to play this decides to put his hand on the top and yep. uh, pass. And here comes Geist number two. Uh, still no white mana, so this is actually. If you're, uh, David, you want to Azorius charm something, just to make him redraw something. Okay, so... Instead, uh, David's going to play Ambush Viper and uh, block the Dryad Militant and not the Stranger Ghost. So, David down to a pretty low life total considering his opponent is, is a little choked on mana. Yeah, Stranger Ghost is one of the best cards at getting your opponent to 10. <laughs> it, I mean, it, it's very, it's excellent. Get them in. Soft, Stranger Guys softens people up. Right. Nobody loses to just Stranger Guys, but it really softens up opponents for cards that come later. Uh, and if. Ooh. That is not a good card for David. Uh, yeah, not where he wants to be right now, because Nathan does not care. I mean, are you just playing a Grey Ogre, or uh, are you just not going to block? Uh, Nathan really needs to attack first. Before he plays his Domery. Uh, That's what he's gonna do. So he's just gonna take it. Wow. He's, David's gotta know something we don't. But here comes Domery. Uh, Nathan draws a third land, but it's still a red green land, not a white land. Domery but, gonna uh, whip. Plus one and misses. So to imagine Domery is gonna be taken out. You know, it's like I'm trying to think of what kind of cards David. Uh, David has to make playing a guy. He has to know he's at five. I would imagine War Leader Helix, one of the few cards. Yeah, he does have two main, so maybe that could be something. Yeah, I mean, that's one of the. He, I mean, you think like you know he attacks, kills Domri. Verdict doesn't leave him in a good situation because he's facing down a three-powered Geist. Right. Uh, he does have Life Link on Azorius Charm as uh, as an option. We do know that he has Azorius Charm in hand, and that's a, that's that's not a, game that's not a seven. bad option. That's ga uh, game six, but I don't think he wants. He can be afford to be, be racing. Enough. Yeah, he's gonna play a, a Steam Vents tap. I guess if he life links on Azorius Charm and he Mizium Mortars here, he's only taking two. Yeah, that looks like the plan. So he Mizium Mortars the the big Geist. Uh, okay, then there Geist you go. Geist Trap attacks. He's gonna go ahead and Azorius Charm gaining uh, six life. Yeah, gaining Put him six. up to a much more comfortable 11. Right, and then he's going to end up taking two from the. Uh, so from Nathan's going to drop to 14. His, his Domery uh, dies. Gone. Yeah. But more importantly, for Nathan, that's the happiest miss I think Nathan's ever seen because he sees Sun Petal Grove on top of his deck. <laughs> Turns on his entire hand. Yeah. Uh, Voice of Resurgence, Locks of the Smiter, Advent of the Worm. Yeah, Nathan. Now, now, pretty for good your, now. You know, in pretty good shape as far as mana now. Yeah, I don't know uh, which one, which one's the one to play. I think it's, I think it's Advent of the Worm. Uh, simply because uh, Voice does not play around Pillar very well. Well, he's going go for Voice. I uh, think he's basically making himself very resilient to Wrath effects because obviously uh, a Verdict here leaves him with a two-two and a three-two. Mm -hmm. So, Verdict does very little. Yeah, uh, and Azorius Charm would be uh, good against uh, Advent of the Worm. I think yeah. Locks of the Smiter is the very hedge, hedge play. I also like Advent of the Worm. If Nathan draws another white source, mm -hmm. he could then play Smiter and Voice of Resurgence in the same turn. Mm -hmm. And that would be a really powerful play. Um, back to David. Up, up a game. Yeah, down to nine after that uh, hit from the strangle root guys. The thing is, David uh, likes to cast. He has a lot ton of instants in his deck. He's going to be casting them on mostly on his own turn. Ah. Wow! So he swings in with the geist, and of course, angel token comes down and uh, yeah. So it knocks Nathan score. to ten, but we have a uh, elemental token. Oh man! There's another sun petal girl. So if you had played advent of the worm, he could be playing both of his creatures. Right. That's right. There's Smiter, of course, doesn't have haste, but can't be countered, so... Yeah, and it kind of has, like, kind of haste, because yeah, it makes the elemental power. bigger. Right, right. Yes. So, uh, that's gonna... It's gonna knock... And David can't find an answer, so... 
wonder what oh, he was, I saw it dissipate. I dissipate didn't see what else was in his hand. He's looking. What, <laughs> I'm not sure what is. Was I going to find anything? I'm not sure what his game plan there was with that right. guy's the same track. He had this weird uh, kind of sort of aggressive, sort of defensive thing like going on. I, I mean, that's the story of his deck. It's sort of aggressive, sort of defensive, right. but like. Or well, he just traded off his Geist's Hate Trap for the Voice of Resurgence. Yeah. I'm not sure like, what, he was trying to, what he was trying to put together there. Yeah, I almost feel like what, yeah, what was going on there because he actually upgraded the voice to it. So, well, it ended up being a 3 3. But he didn't downgrade it either. But yeah. Right. I mean, if Nathan had been at 4, that would have made a lot more sense. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We've been at like, not 14. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it knocked him to 10. Knocked him only to 10. And then you didn't really have any defense. Uh, it's one thing if he's going to try and, you know, draw some burn spells off the top and just leave Domery alone. That'll, leave, you know, leave him at 6 or whatever and leave him drawing some right. burn spells. But we're, uh, we're going to the third game here. Yeah, it seemed like he kept shifting gears there a little bit. I mean, yep. he had to be defensive early on because despite Nathan's lack of white mana, he had... He's up plays. Yeah, he had guys that could. That could By the uh, time he was absolutely damage. out of things to do. Yeah. Uh, with uh, with only red and green, yeah. he drew his white mana. Right. And it, and it's a Nathan never game. passed on a turn. You know, he after turn two he played Strangle guys, Strangle guys, or Strangle guys then Dry Militant plus Rancor. Right. And then and then Strangle guys, guys then Dame. Yep. And then the turn after that, that's when he had his white mana. Exactly. So he did have options, but he still had plays. Right. He had options once he had the white mana, but yeah. So, I mean, Nathan's role is, like, good enough mm. to put enough pressure on David. And, like, David kind of uh, threw away cards. He, he um, played a Snapcaster for no value. Yeah, just Ambush Viper. Right. Uh, he was always charmed because he had to gain six life. He needed to deal with the Militant or else Snapcaster was an Ambush Viper anyway. Yes. But, yes. One of the appeals of uh, Dry Militant. Right. It's a 2-1, not super exciting, but acceptable. I mean, it's Savannah Lions, right? I mean, sort of. Savannah Lions is no longer what it used to be. No. Uh, unfortunately for Savannah Lions, but... No. Yeah, I... I, it, I don't know that David would have come away with a win in that game, but I feel like there were some things he may have done differently to buy himself a few more turns to potentially pull it out. Then again, I don't know how he boarded. Maybe he, you yeah. know, looking at it, he had like a dissipate in hand is the only thing I saw at the end of that right. game. Obviously, dissipate not going to do anything. So, Steve Metz like for that. David tapped, untapped Temple Garden, uh, enables Dryan Militant. So, it looks like Nathan's hand's really good. I see voice. Yeah, so David Pillar, immediately pillars the uh, right, the and pillar does get exiled. Right, uh, it's where destroy effects uh, go to the graveyard. Uh, damage based effects get exiled with dried militant. Has to do with uh, state based effects and stuff. Looks like another pillar there for David, and of course we're gonna yeah. see that happen right here on the voice. And steam vents and pass. So David keeping the board clear. Strangle Root Geist. Got any more pillars? Yeah. Be nice. I mean, this is very much a pillar overload deck. Yeah. Did he just draw a pillar? I think he just drew I, a pillar. I think it's Mizium. Nope, it's no, pillar. He has Mil Mizium Mortars too, but he just drew a pillar. He kept in at least one as a charm. Uh, but yeah. Uh, David still keeping the board clear with uh, Oh, this Miller, is going to be a savage he just, is it charm. Did he draw a Snapcaster? <laughs> I, I don't know. I, I mean, I don't think This is going to be savage. Advent of the Worm comes from Nathan, and again, is it charmed? No. Wow. That is discipline. Yes, I don't know how he... I don't, that seemed like a, that is, the best... If he forgot to cast that there? <laughs> I, I don't know. That is... You think that is incredible. Crazy discipline from Nathan if he if he's trying to play around Is it Charm. Yeah, I can't imagine he's playing around Is it Charm. He hasn't seen it, has he? Yeah, or just counter spells, counter spells in general. Yeah. Maybe yeah, just waiting he's until seen, like syncopate, uh, dissipate. Yeah. Nope, he just wants no. it on this turn. Yeah, and so I think uh, he just forgot. Yeah. Is it good? Nope. Is it Charm? Savage Is it Charm. I believe that is a Searing Spear from uh, Nathan, the, the FNM version. Yeah. 
think you're right. And it ought to go with a Boros charm. Yeah, he's got a lot of burn. And uh, well, David's got a lot of burn if you like Pillar of Flame. Yeah. So uh, here comes the snap. I think this is a main phase snapcaster here. Yeah, to get the Pillar of Flame. Nope, he just wants a is it charm. Uh, yeah, I should. Uh, Boris Charm is going to make indestru is, uh, guy indestructible. His one guy indestructible. Ooh, another just... land, and we're going to see Searing Spear for the Snapcaster Mage. Yeah, what is that? Oh, Searing Spear. No, yeah, okay. it's, it's, uh, so Silver Blade Paladin gets him for two. Yeah, the most embarrassing of Silver Blade Paladins. But he was indestructible for like a minute there. That was not. That was exciting. That was less embarrassing. Yeah. Uh, but hey, guess what? Pillar of Flame. <laughs> wow! Shrinking guys off the yeah. top. Um, we've already seen that it. That might have been that might have been a really big mistake from David. Right to pillar uh, the, the gray ogre. Yeah, because he wants to pillar this. Yeah, and now he's. The flip side is he does. David does want to get Snapcaster into play. Yeah. And start attacking, and he is one land away from turn and burn. Now he just drew it. But uh, I feel like Turn and Burn is a pretty good answer to any creature that can be targeted. Yeah, it just seems like so expensive. Like I like doing that to a Drag Tusk or like a Sire of Insanity or like Angel. That feels good. Yeah, Turn yeah. and Burn. You're like Stranglehold guys. Turn and, and Burn. Uh, and, and it, it did the job. It feel it did the job. The feel bad so yeah. you know, you're like yeah, yes. It does. It does oh, so do David, the job. Also, David, to answer our question, David did bring in Staticaster. Okay. I thought he would. Yeah. Nathan was just a never-ending stream of guys, and uh, David's gonna revelation for two with a Boros Reckoner. Uh, apparently, either on the stack or on the board. Either way, I think it's either hitting way, the board. It's, yeah. It's not. Nathan it's actually not, way. not all that threat happy. Uh, he's drawing. He's. He seems he's to be got, top decking a threat after threat, but David's <laughs> able to like one for one him every time. Mm-hmm. Uh. There's turn another turn and burn. Yeah. Right. The turn makes that makes it so that the Boris Reckoner does not redirect any damage. I love that that Snapcaster is like over there hiding behind Nathan's graveyard, like, yeah. ha, I got you. And just, <laughs> I guess I that's in play. Uh, is it Staticaster in David's hand now? Yeah, yeah. I think you said you saw it earlier. So um, that that should take care of the Dryad Militant. militant. Yeah. So David, probably just going to do it main, enough. main phase just so we can get in with his uh, Snapcaster. Yes, again. I agree with that. He's also got a, a Restoration Angel there. Two of them. So his hand's quite loaded, whereas uh, David's behind on... Oh, wow. Look at that, no block. Nice uh, I think now you just points. passed, yeah. Nathan, I guess, really just wants a threat on the table, so uh, doesn't want to just trade with that Snapcaster. And, yeah, Dryad Militant swings in, Restoration Angel. Doesn't even want to block. So he just uh, burns the uh, burns the dry mountain, and Nathan draws a, his ninth land, not where he wants to be. But he's already uh, quite far behind. Yeah, now the tag team of Snapcaster Mage Restoration Angel knock Nathan to five, lethal on board, and a Boros Reckoner. Not gonna uh, do it. Yeah, it, it's gonna be uh, not gonna be enough because we know there's another uh, uh, Restoration Angel. No, there's there. literally every card in uh, yeah. David's hand. If only. Yeah, Molly I'm gonna. Helix, you. Yeah. And there's the handshake from Nathan. And David Barani uh, wins his match 2-1. to one. He is going to advance to the top 8, likely be our top, top seed. seed. Yeah. After, uh, after all that lost on camera earlier to a uh, jump, Yo, jump we, deck. We've seen his only loss on camera. Yeah, exactly. He's won every other round. Yeah, so... Uh, Good for him. And you, you saw how that deck kind of came together. It seemed like he had a focused plan there. Uh, and he had the cards, the right cards. You, he, he had, had the cards pillars first. and Snapcaster 